I'm watching basketball, NBA playoffs, in full swing, and fresh off a trip to Coachella where Frank Ocean disappointed everyone. He's probably still, you know, dusting off the uh, Palm Springs desert off of him. Chandler Parsons is here to join us with the latest. And yes, we will talk about Draymond Green, the biggest story in sports this morning. Plus, we have a guest on the show, rising star cornerback for the Detroit Lions, Jerry Jacobs, joins us. We'll get to know him. And I'm going to give some mage love to a prospect who might just be the best player in the draft. Let's go. Okay, so yesterday's news cycle went like this. Well, first, well, Sunday into Monday. It went, it was Love is Blind, Netflix, I Hate Netflix, whatever. And then everyone on Netflix was like, ah, no big deal. Let me take it easy here because Frank Ocean disappointed. And that was the biggest story at Coachella where he shows up an hour late, plays for an hour. There's a DJ, there's silence, there's weird, and then there's curfew and he has to go home and nothing gets to happen. He took the news cycle. Then it, you know, finally spotlighted where it should be, the man of the moment, Jalen Hurts, this mega deal making him the highest paid player ever. Congrats to him, to Clutch Sports, to Nicole Lynn, his entire team. <laughs> that was the, the huge story of yesterday. But with that and how it affects Lamar and all the ins and outs of what that might mean for the Burroughs and the Herberts coming up and wanting to get paid, something in the news cycle Someone flew under the radar. And it was any other day with a little less going on, I think it would get a little bit more uh, interest, peak some uh, eyebrows and ears. Tom Pelissero, our guy, he said that Bama quarterback, highly protected guy, Bryce Young, has canceled his remaining pre-draft pre visits, which tells us, because we are all smart, savvy NFL fans and, you know, wish we were GM people, this is the lock. He is the Panthers' pick at number one overall. So while that's big in and of itself, let's be honest, it gets especially interesting when you start to connect some of the other dots and show how this might impact the rest of the draft. Let's talk about the Texans, right? They pick it too. There have been rumors for months, like a long time, consistently and loudly, that they've been hoping that Carolina takes CJ Stroud, number one overall, so they can land Bryce Young with the number two pick. Why? Of course, they prefer Bryce Young, that's obvious. But there are these weird reports, and I don't know how much this matters. I'd love to hear from you guys. There's these reports that Nick Casario, who calls all the shots down there, legend from his New England days and putting together these Super Bowl winning teams. Uh, so Casario and Stroud's agent, David Mulligetta, they are like, no thank you, we don't wanna to work together. There might be some reservations there about going to the mat again. And usually I'm like, no, no agent's gonna get in between like a draft pick happening or something. But this is one of the bad ones in the, the books of NFL history. What happened between him, he of course, Deshaun Watson's representative through everything that happened so publicly and soured so much in Houston. So, uh, and everything that happened in Cleveland. So I, maybe they don't want to go back and keep working on this together. Maybe it's like, you know, there's a lot um, to consider when it comes to that. But, you know, maybe this overwhelming feeling that Bryce Young is going to Carolina is why we're hearing Nick Casario say things like this. These are quotes from him, the GM. Are we open for business? We're open to listening. That was at his press conference just yesterday. Listen, there have been rumors exploding over the past few days about the Texans shocking the world, potentially drafting someone else at number two overall, not a non-quarterback. I'll have a little more on that later in the show, and I don't know if I love that. But this could get chaotic over the next couple of days. As Peter Baelish said in Them Thrones, Chaos is a ladder, and that's what this is going to be, people. There's the possibility that this Texan situation can create a golden opportunity for one of those other teams that needs a quarterback. So listen, if you're a fan of the Colts, and this is why you should care, you're like, Texans, they'll pick it too. It matters to you. The Colts, the Titans, the Raiders, I think the Bucks, the Commanders, play, pay really close attention here because the window for your team to strike and grab one of these top quarterbacks may have just opened even wider than the potential bidding war for that pick at three with the Cardinals. Uh, we'll see what happens there. My mic is bad, is that what we're talking about? What's going on with my mic? 
It flips. It flipped upside down. Should we just do the show over again? Well, that's why I don't want to put it in that clip. See, audio? Because it wasn't going to work. Can you guys deal with this? It sounds okay right now. Let's try to do this and make it really ugly. How about that? Can you hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, okay, well, basically what I said is the Texans might not want to take Stroud at two, so they might pick somebody else, look for a trade partner. Uh, and those quarterback needy teams that are all obsessed with the Cardinals might say, hey, let's see what it takes to move up to two. And maybe Casario and them will play ball, as I'm sure they'd want to move down in the draft if they can't get Bryce Young. Bryce Young seems to be a lock because he got rid of all of his and canceled all of his pre-draft visits. So that means he knows where he's going and he's sitting pretty. Just like Chandler Parsons joining us in a bit here on the show. Uh, now, speaking of the Cardinals, we got into the DeAndre Hopkins of it all yesterday on the program. I made the case that the Bills might need him, a guy like him, to help their passing game, which uh, declined in the middle of the season, towards the middle of the season, if they want to go ahead and win a Super Bowl. Uh, but there's also this thing going on with all-pro safety and friend. I'm going to say best friend. We're basically obsessed with him. Buda Baker. Okay? He's reportedly requested a trade. And according to those reports, he wants to be the highest paid safety in the NFL wherever he goes. Guess what? He should be. He might be the best safety in the NFL. I, I don't... What... What went wrong here between Buddha and the Cardinals, okay? Because uh, the way that I'm looking at it, let me get to my notes that I wrote in here but weren't updated. Let me look. I just don't like it. I wrote in here, what are they doing? And I kind of got into this a little bit yesterday. What are the Cardinals doing? They have one foundational piece. It's a five-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro, uh, great talent. And when you have so much turnover on offense and defense, you pay your guy, the guy who's done it for you, to sort of lead you through and be one piece that they can figure out amidst a new coach, a weird quarterback situation, potentially losing DeAndre Hopkins, all of that. So, you know, uh, Buda Baker puts up this cryptic Jordan gif. I actually haven't seen this. Do we have that? Uh, it seems kind of personal because he's done basically everything that he's wanted to do. And he's reportedly now requested a trade because they didn't extend him, which they had the opportunity to do, of course, and didn't. So according to those reports, he does want to be the highest paid safety. Uh, you know, one team's a bad handling of a situation or, you know, neglect to extend what their best player is another team's 27-year-old who could change your defense in a minute, this is a cornerstone. This is a guy who, if you're a team like the Bengals, if you're a team like the Jaguars, the Eagles, all who have been rumored possible destinations for said Buda Baker, you want that guy and he can change everything. I had Buda on the show, guys, before Super Bowl. And uh, it was right around the time of his you know, initial trade request, request when we were talking about this. And I figured the Cardinals would do the right thing and extend him. So uh, let's take a look. At, not the tequila bar. I don't care about that. Can I get Buddha? I asked him what he looks for. It's before, of course, they hired a head coach. They didn't have a coach at all. What are you looking for in a coach? What is important to you as this elite player in on this team? Whoever you are, and uh, you know, we'll go from there. Something that I really like is that Eagles coach. Um, he's he who he's who he is. Nick Sirianni. And exactly. So just seeing that is definitely special as a player. If it was up to Buddha, then he might go to the Eagles, right? They're rumored to maybe want him. And the Cardinals, though, can decide, like, let's do right by our player. Let's send him where he wants to go. We saw the Chiefs do that with Tyreek Hill last year, sending him uh, to Miami. If I'm Heather Roseman, I'm looking at this clip the day after signing Jalen Hurts to that mega deal, seeing how much the superstar loves my head coach, I'm going all in to make it happen. Remember, Philly loses C.J. Gardner-Johnson this offseason. There's a need there. They need a guy. This is the best guy. Jalen's new cap hit, by the way. You guys are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't get crazy. We just spent all this money on our quarterback. His new cap hit is just over $6 million this year. That means they're going to have about $20 million in cap space available. So 
they can still swing this if they so wanted to. They have two first round picks in this upcoming draft. They've got plenty of assets to deal to make it happen. I know how he knows this, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. The window to strike is right now, before Hertz and that deal and all that money fully kicks in. You go all in, push in the chips. I say Eagles, go get Buddha. And you can basically, basically ensure this team's going to be even better than the one that made it so close to capturing the Lombardi a season ago and wants to get right back, despite the losses and some of the change over there. So there's that. Now, it was um, another night of crazy and NBA action, Hamilton. I am so basketball, and it's death taxes and something in the postseason has to do with Draymond Green and a controversy. Yeah, it, it it doesn't feel like playoff basketball till Draymond starts stomping on people. So uh, we've arrived. We're here. We've arrived. <laughs> Whose side are you on? Um, I'm uh, I'm on the Sabonis side oh. of this. I know he grabbed his leg, but you don't deserve to get stomped in the chest the way that Draymond did. That <gasps> was uh, that was excessive. But he grabbed his leg. If he grabbed his leg, can't he hurt him by grabbing his leg? I Who know, but that? he's. I know, but he's also, he's falling into him. He's trying to stop himself from continuing to roll. He shouldn't have wrapped around the leg. I agree with that. He wasn't totally in the right, but you don't just stomp full force on somebody's chest. It was very WWE. And then click your heels as you run away. (laughs) Yes, it was very Draymond. We don't know if he'll be suspended. Maybe Shams will tell us. Everybody can watch Run It Back. We'll see what Chandler Parsons' thoughts are on this. But here's my thoughts. And as as I'm watching these games, and it happened on Sunday too, uh, on TNT, because I just don't, I don't want, no, I don't watch during the season, right? So I don't know if this is happening. But FanDuel is such a, like a prominent partner of theirs and a great partner that like there's signage everywhere. And there's like, you know, the announcers are saying, watch Up and Adams. And I'm like, I'm so into this. I didn't know this happened. This is so great. <laughs> and then I'm li- I would be lying because they have, you know, what I would be lying that, you know, working where we work and, and seeing, you know, all the fun going on with the NBA playoffs. Uh, part of me <laughs> is saying, I want to parlay it up a little bit, okay? Maybe it's time. As you know, I've been out of the parlay game. I've been grounded in a corner for a long time. And I crunched some numbers, Hamilton, and I must be dealt with. I don't know what to do, though. It has been. I counted. I'm not kidding. I counted. It has been 79 days since I put out my last parlay. And you're saying, oh, that's not that long. Okay, whatever. Uh, and, and I'm watching these series, and all of the talk is about the Kings, right? We'll get into that. The Kings breaking their historic playoff drought. The Knicks winning their first road playoff opener in 24 years. These streaks ending. I have the most disgusting, despicable, pathetic but kind of impressive losing streak going on. <laughs> let me, t- let me, you know, can I tell, guess my parlays, 0 for 13. Yikes. I mean, I knew you didn't that hit one, I didn't realize do. it was 13. That, that is, and you're right. Only you could sp- spin this into being impressive and a positive, but yeah, that is, it's, that's tough. It's not easy to do, uh, I think. And, tell, but and, we had some really close ones. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, there was the Cooper Cup one. He's a yard away from from you hitting. A, that was a big one too. That was like a plus four hundred return or something in that ballpark. And he blow and he hurts his knee a yard away from picking it up. Um, oh, the Brock Purdy one, the NFC Championship game with Brock Purdy getting I injured. That. that was brutal. It's just, and I, I think that's remember. the last one you did. I think that was the one that made you just step away from everything. So uh, it was, uh, you can't have worse luck than you've had. I, honestly, there, there were some really so, bad breaks in there. It's not all, you know, it's, it, it can't, it's not all your fault, honestly. As much as I love to blame you for so things. What, so what happens now? You know, like, I can't just be like, okay, new sport. I mean, there's something to that. I'm cursed. It's clear. Maybe it's just like a toxic mindset. I get, you know, I don't remember the Brock Purdy thing. I swear to God, I swear to God, I don't remember. I don't even remember that happening. I blocked it out because it's such a negative thing that happened. I, you know, like I I could not believe our group texts. We should print them out are so insane about these. Um, But something's wrong and I have the numbers to back it up. Oh, and 13. So I want to turn it around. I would like to know, maybe I'll ask Chandler this. What can, look, what do people do when they're on, you know, they can't shoot, they can't hit, they lose their swing. Like, what, do I need a shaman? Do I need to call Aaron Rodgers? 
and go to a dark I, place before I go to a light place? I think there is something off here energy wise. And, and I, I, here's where I think it started. I'm going to, I'm going to take everybody back to the first parlay you did and we're talking about it. And before we even set what the, before you even give your parlay and what it's going to be, you're planning the celebration. You're ordering the champagne bottles. You're ordering the tarps. Yeah. I think Brian came over here with tarps. Uh, I think that's what started off the bad energy. You can't start planning the celebration before you win anything. I think you're right. There is a box that is gathering <laughs> dust with champagne and plastic flutes and, and all sorts of confetti and hoopla uh, <laughs> for when I won. And it sat there for 13 weeks. Oh, and it wasn't 13 weeks because I just gave up. Some weeks I go, I don't want, I'm not doing this. I'm not, I don't want to hang out and, and, and do this. But you and I cooked up some good, it's not, some good ones and tried to get it done. So here's what I would like. I would like some tweets and suggestions on how to cleanse oneself of juju. A shaman, a healer, potentially somebody talking to Draymond Green today <laughs> to sort of fix what's going on. <laughs> Let's get to it. All right, uh, and by the way, are NBA parlays fun? Oh, they're a lot of fun. Okay. They're a lot of fun. All There's right. a lot you can get, get involved with, yeah. I can't lose another one. 0-14 is... Uh uh, I'm going to the Hoffman Center in Malibu for two weeks, and he'll he won't see me. All right, we'll talk to you later, Hamilton. We've got a special guest on the show. I think he's in my seat from FanDuel's Run It Back NBA veteran Chandler Parsons. Draymond just stomps people out. What's going on? Oh, Draymond, you look like you're a first grader in class. I pick on you to answer the question next. All right, take a look at the NBA bracket. I'm all in. It's updated after last night's action. Shout out Kings. Our next guest back with us on Up and Adams playing nine seasons in the NBA. Perhaps did or did not enjoy some fun in the desert this weekend. We welcome back our friend Chandler Parsons. How are you? Hello. How you doing? I'm good. I'm better than uh, Sabonis, is it? Let's talk about this. We've got to talk, talk, you know, start this morning. It doesn't feel like it should be as controversial, but, I mean, this stuff follows Draymond around, right? So they got into it last night. Let's start here. Break the play down. Let's show it. Well, yeah, this, I mean, listen, this whole series has been pretty physical, and Sabonis, I felt like, was on the ground a lot this, this this game, but this is what he does. He plays very physical, and and, and they were banging. And and listen, he was down. He's saying he was trying to de defend himself. Uh, can you grab someone's ankle like that and foot? No, but I do think that the st the Stone Cold Steve Austin stomp that that he gave him afterwards was a little <laughs> uncalled for, and that's what inevitably led him to getting ejected from the game. I don't think there's going to be a suspension. I think they're no? already they're already down 2-0. They 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 have done a great job now, kind of blaming this ejection last night on the loss and how it was all reactive and how this wouldn't have happened Spin. if Sabonis didn't grab his leg. So. I, I think it's Draymond's past and his history of being in these altercations. And I think what no one's talking about, which is a huge part, is how he was kind of turning up the crowd while they're reviewing the play. Probably wasn't the smartest thing he could do because if they did let him come back in the game, I think the situation would have escalated more with him and Sabonis, with the fans, with the other players on the on the court. So I definitely, it's in his defense, it wouldn't have happened if Sabonis didn't grab his foot. Yes, but you can't stomp someone in the chest like this while they're on the ground uh, and then try and play it off and do the little hop after, afterwards was pretty good. But, yeah, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't seen this one before. Draymond, was it dirty? It was it was dirty enough to us to all talk about it today, but it was again it's there's it's not dirty enough where there's some question and, and again like was he just trying to jump over him? Did his momentum take him down? There's a lot of things in the video that are in his favor, but then the simple fact is that he did stomp him. He did stomp him in the chest, and, that, and that's a very dirty play. But again, it, it could go. I, I see there's some people that are, are agreeing with him and are disagreeing with him. But either way, it's the, you can't do that. Yeah, you're you not, not a great look. No. I like that you mentioned the PR of it all, the the extracurriculars, the crowd. I'm watching this game, and 
Is there a better home crowd than Sacramento right now? No, there's not. This looks like, I mean, listen, they haven't been in the playoffs in 16 years. This place is rocking. They got the towels going. And, and they have a very young, exciting, fun team. And I hate that this is the story today that everyone's talking about Draymond yeah. Green because the Kings have looked like the better team. And now the Kings have the defending champs on the ropes down 2-0. Uh, and, and that should be the story. And whether or not he gets suspended or not, that's one thing. And he is critical to the Warriors' success. But the, give the flowers to the Sacramento Kings, their bench, their coach, their fans. That place is rocking, and, and, and they can, they're having so much fun. It's great for the NBA to have them back. It's true. Now, it's not great for you that Giannis is hurt, right? Because you picked yeah. these Bucks to win the entire thing. Hard to do before the you know, playoffs even start, but they get blown out by Miami in game one. Giannis goes down. I know our boy Shams is saying he's likely, he used the word likely, to suit up for game two. But are you losing confidence in your pick? Uh, slightly, just because the Heat are a very good team, and they play tough, and they defend. And Jimmy Butler looked like playoff Jimmy, but... No, it's still early. I think as soon as, you know, everyone talks about game one, game one, then as soon as you win game two, game one is just a memory and, and it's all tied and all squared. So I do think the Bucks are still the superior team. I think Giannis will play through this injury. There's nothing structural, right? There's nothing torn. There's nothing that he can't play through. He's going to be uncomfortable and he may be a little bit slow, but the Bucks have been the best team all year long. It's not the way they wanted this series to start, but I still have confidence in them to get this done. Love that. We are an NFL show. You were at Coachella. Of course, we looked at your pictures. Let's mm. look at the fit. Let's look at the company that you were keeping in this one. First with the outfit. You went, it's pretty low key. Yeah, listen, I was pretty low key. I told you, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of over <laughs> the whole festival, the whole situation. So I threw a little something okay, together. This, yeah, this was, I think, at Gorillas. This is all, this is my squad here that I was pretty much with all weekend. Um, and look, it was fun. I still feel absolutely horrendous today. My allergies are at an all-time high. <laughs> uh, the festival itself was, was, was pretty fun. I didn't know Blink-182 was going to perform, and so that was awesome. They are like my favorite band of my childhood. Uh, Metro Boomin was awesome. I ended up not going. My wife, Haley, and her friends all went to Frank Ocean. They said it was probably yeah. the worst performance oh. of all time. So I'm glad I missed yeah. that one. Uh, but it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I pretty much just played golf and chilled at, you know, where I stayed all weekend long. And but I went, I went to a couple parties. Old though. man vibes. I know. I told you. It. I told it's you. It's funny that it's it's funny that you mentioned Metro Boomin because I love those Goldbergs. And I hit up when I saw that photo, and I know Travis Kelsey's in there. We'll get to that in a second. I hit up Goldberg. I go, give me something. Give me some Coachella story. Oh, goes, you know the Goldbergs. It was a great time. Yeah, he goes. He goes. Metro Bloomin. He didn't know if he didn't know if it was a DJ or a producer. Make fun of him for that. Yeah, me neither. By the way, so I'm right there. I don't there either. With by the way. Yeah, me neither. Uh, no idea. Okay. Well, listen. Sports. Kelsey. You guys linked up. He's in this photo. Sports media is obsessed right now, specifically with can this NFL guy do this NBA thing? Could an NBA guy do anything? Like can LeBron be a tight end in the NFL? All this. So I'm going to put it to you like this. In your boys with Kelsey, what has a better chance of happening? Travis scoring five points in an NBA game or you scoring a touchdown in the NFL in your primes? I think it would be me scoring a touchdown because I think, you know, have a Tom Brady, have a Aaron Rodgers, have a Patrick Mahomes. I think I could run a little quick little slant. I got height. I'm 6'10". I was athletic at one point. Scoring five <laughs> points, well, I don't know if he's going to get to the free throw line. I don't know. And I, honestly, I don't, I've never seen Travis shoot a basketball. But that's very, very hard to have a guy guarding you in your face, very athletic. And I do think, I think NBA players can transition to other sports better than, better than any other athlete. Like I think LeBron James, I think Zion, Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, these guys that are 6'5 to 6'9 with all the foot speed, with all the quickness, with all the strength, they could go and be receivers and they could go and be tight ends uh, more than a, you know, a tight end could come and be like a small forward or a power forward in the NBA with the skill and the ball handling and everything that goes with basketball. But the physicality standpoint, I think it just would transition better for a basketball player. And I think I could get a quick little slant from Mahomes quicker than Travis could get five points. You're a big target. How many points could Travis score in the NBA? On me? On I'm, anyone. 
I mean, sure. I, again, I, I don't know. There's some football players that played basketball that are actually pretty good. Like, I remember my buddy Jimmy Graham. He played at Miami. He was solid. He was a hooper. You know, there's yeah. some guys back in the day. So I, I don't know. I, it's, it's, I love the idea, like, when guys are like, oh, I'm better than this guy. This NBA player sucks. I'm always like, do you know how good you have to be to be bad in the NBA? Like, people, sh like, <laughs> poop on Brian Scalabrini. I'm like, that guy was so cold-blooded. Oh, like, he would Brian. destroy anybody in, like, an L.A. fitness league or all these park guys that talk all the garbage. So I, I, I don't know. I think, I, I think it's a lot harder than it looks. Chandler, do you ever do those things? If I had your superpower, I would just hit every YMCA on the, on the western seaboard <sighs> and just, you know, go take everybody to town. Do you ever do that? I do not. My knees, Kay, are so shot. I yeah. stick to just golf and pickleball now. Pickleball. And unfortunately, <laughs> I can still shoot a little bit. I went to Dave & Buster's with my daughter, and I still, I think I broke a record for Thousand Oaks, Dave & Buster. <laughs> but that's pretty much all I got in my bag now. Do you remember the record? What did you hit? I think I got like, you know, 87 points in like 30 seconds. I legitimately <laughs> did not miss a shot. So, yeah, take that. That's amazing. Well, it's a crazy <laughs> thing because I want, like, everyone, I'm, I'm not interested in what, what could he do. Like, I don't care, but people care so much. But, like, we're never going to get the answer, right? Like, there's, is, there, is there any situation where we could just be like, Travis, go play in an NBA game? I mean, you... Like, go, let's go, let's... I want an answer to the science project. No, I remember Romo, like, warmed up with the Mavs a couple years ago, and, like, and he could shoot a little bit, <laughs> really? but, again, it's, it's the physicality of it. I don't think that you can... And, by the way, I don't think I can handle the NFL either. I do not like contact. I do not want to be tackled by those guys. No chance. But I just think the skill level, the touch, the finesse, the ball handling, everything yeah. that goes into it, I, it's not that easy. Or ever, everyone I else would it. do now, it. So, so you didn't answer the question, but Kelsey would score zero points in an NBA game. No, zero, listen, could right? he get fouled and like go to the free throw line and make a free throw? <laughs> sure. Could he make like a Hail Mary shot at the buzzer? Yeah, he could. But no, I don't think he could score in the NBA. It's a well said and a safe answer. Uh, let's let's talk about some of these rising stars. I like the underdog storylines, but or just guys that are on the rise are not really underdogs. They're popping off right now. Tyrese Maxey from the Sixers, Malik Monk from the Kings, mm. Austin Reeves with the Lakers. Who is him? Like who is the rising star in the NBA right now? Oh, out of those three, Tyrese Maxey's the best player. He's, he's, he's so fast. He's so athletic. He's literally become the second option and kind of jumped James Harden on the 76ers. And you see last game, James Harden struggled. And, and I do think he'll be beneficial. And I do think he'll come back and have a big game in game three or four. But Tyrese can get in the lane. He can make big shots. He gets to the foul line. He gets out in transition. He's so fast. He's so quick and dynamic with the ball in his hands that he is a star. And he's put himself in a situation to get a huge contract extension and Malik Monk same thing he kind of had that comeback year for the Lakers and now he's you know pretty much one of the better players on the Kings he's such a spark plug off the bench he's so athletic and Austin Reeves yeah he is uh he is him he is he is confident and he plays so smart right he's a little bit different because he does have a little sauce to his game he can handle the ball he can go and score but he's playing it's, it's almost as like Lynn Sanity in the fourth quarter with him he has his confidence at an all-time high his playmaking he's always had a high IQ where he can get everybody involved and he knows how to play and fit in and know his role that's what makes him so special other guys they think they're better than they are they think they're a star they try and do much mm. they take bad shots Austin Reeves doesn't do that he plays the game very very smart and very you know unselfish and knows his role on the Lakers and it's his role just continues to get bigger and bigger beautifully said and I can't wait to see them all in action there's games tonight so let's go through them LA can they steal another win on the road over the Suns uh, I, I don't see it. I saw the spread was like eight and a half points. I don't know how that the, they got that. There is a whole thing going on. Scott Foster, the referee, he's refing. Chris Paul has lost the last 14 games in the postseason with Scott Foster oh refereeing. So that ain't good for the Suns. <laughs> but I do think they bounce back. I think they're the better team. I think they're the, 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 the better offense. Uh, they just got to find a way to control Kawhi Leonard. Uh yeah, 
It's not Kawhi that easy, though. Yeah. I mean, I only watched the one game. It was crazy. And then Russell Westbrook with that, that play on Devin Booker was, I was, I'm into the Clippers, I think. Yeah. I think that's my team. You gave me the Sixers, and they pulled it out. But I think I'm a, I'm a Clippers and a, I think everybody's going to love the Kings, so I don't have to. But the Clippers yeah. are going to get my L.A. love because I'm new to the area. Um, you mentioned that streak with the ref and Chris Paul, I think you said. Um, you had a crazy streak, too. My producers did their homework. You scored. Take me to 2014. Are you joking? You scored 10 three-pointers hey. in a half. I did. What, 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 you were, know, what, what were you feeling? I, I honestly, I fully blacked out here. I don't know what happened. I remember <laughs> my coach here was Kevin McHale, who's a legendary Boston Celtics, legendary player, top 50 of all time. And I struggled a little bit in the first half, and he literally told me, stop shooting play defense and, and, and impact the game in other ways. And I went out there and hmm. made 10 threes and a half and broke the NBA record and I still have the Houston Rockets record. I think a couple, I think Clay and Steph have tied it since, but yeah, no one's no one's yet to break it. So that was pretty cool and still cool to be in, uh, be in the history books. What did you do that night? Again, probably don't remember every little detail. There was probably, <laughs> there was probably some alcohol involved, but I definitely went out, uh, yeah. went out on the town in Houston. As you should. Now, I have this horrible parlay streak going. I'm 0-13. I've never won a parlay. I've never, My it's God. never hit. It's really sad. So I'm thinking of getting into the NBA side. I've never done an NBA parlay. Any advice, or when you were having a bad streak or whatever, do you have any superstitions that you sort of get into? Well, how many team parlays are you, or is this like a 10-team parlay, or is it like a know. three or four Probably team? Like, like three. Three? Okay, to lose 13 in a row is pretty impressive. If it's only three, and you're I only know. picking three games? I'm the GOAT. All right, we got to get you. Yeah, we got, well, you're good if everyone's just doing the opposite of what you're saying. We have a joke on Run It Back, too, where we literally have hit, like, six all season long. I'd like to think I'm the best guy <laughs> at picking. But, no, okay. I mean, listen, you just, you got to be confident. A guy, th I would say go with your instinct. When you look at it, again, you don't, you're, you're doing NBA parlays, too, now, or no? I'm going to try to put one out, I think. But I just need to go visit, like, a witch doctor, let's a tarot put, card let's, reader, let's somebody with energy you, uh, healing. <laughs> yeah, get you a shaman. Yes. Yeah, well, why don't we do the three games him. tonight? Let's let's put you in. Let's get you on the board tonight. What's to, what's tonight? So tonight we got Hawks Celtics Celtics. LA. Yeah, Celtics are a huge favorite. Again, you can just go like money line on these games and kind of get a freebie here. No, and just I don't take see. That's Celtics. not fun it's for me. It's kind of cheating. Like, but if you want to break the streak, we yeah. can go money lines and we can get you off the Schneid. Oh. I okay, think you like go. A, I think you go Hawks. <laughs> I think you go Hawks plus ten and a half tonight. If that's still the spread, Hawks it may have plus ten and a half. That means basically they okay. can lose. If they lose by eleven <laughs> or more, you're in trouble. Okay, give me give me one more. Maybe I won't do this one today. Okay. I'll do one tomorrow. Like, but I'm gonna then, see if you're good. Okay, and then I like Cleveland Cavaliers tonight. I think they're gonna win big. I think they're gonna cover the spread. So I think the spread is minus five and a half. That means they basically five have to half. win by six or more, and I think they're gonna do that tonight, being down in the series. And then one more. And then let's give get me a, something spicy. Well, the Hawks like is a, the Hawks is spicy. The Hawks might oh, get blown okay. out. I think we go the opposite. Right. I think we take a freebie. I think we take the Suns money line tonight just to, to, to tie up this series. So you have a spicy one with Hawks. the Hawks. You have a safe one with the Suns. And then the Cavs, six points is a lot. But I think they get it done, being, again, being down 0-1. Okay. Oh, what, were you, what were you saying, Conrad? What? Plus 350 for that parlay. Yeah. Book it. Great. Great. <laughs> book, book it. Book Parsons, it. you're so confident. I love that. You know who else is really confident? Your friend Shams. So while you were sleeping, and this amazing move by you saying, I can't come on the show Monday, I'm coming back from Coachella, yeah. uh, and you have allergies, which you're dealing with, which I'm sure are <laughs> so terrible, uh, let's show you this very short video of what Shams was up to on television. I've got that sunshine in my pocket, got that good soul in my feet. I'm retired now. You're retired. They said one line, I'm good. And I'm good. Over. I've got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that good that doesn't even camera. sound like him. I'm retired now. You're retired. They said no. one line, I'm good. And I'm good. Over. Mm. He's saying more than Frank Ocean. That is true. That Also, that literally didn't sound like Shams. I'm actually surprised you got him to sing, too. I don't know how that happened, but we're not going to. Are we going to make him sing or are we done? No chance. I don't know what's going on. I'm at home. Who's... Who's running the, the show back there? I don't Sorry, know. Sorry, I'm at home today, Chandler, as you know.
Are you Hello, back in anyone? LA or are you still in New York? I'm in LA, but I'm dealing with these allergies from my weekend, so I just couldn't <laughs> come in today. But Chandler, I hope to see you soon. You're awesome. Great information on those rising stars and great breakdowns. And now we have a parlay for you guys over to have some fun at FanDuel Sportsbook. Appreciate you. We will talk to you soon. And go give uh, Sham some crap for his uh, suboptimal tones. Okay, up next we've got a guest from the great state of Georgia. That's right, he played Arkansas State in Arkansas. He's with the Detroit Lions. We've got quarterback Jerry Jacobs on next. That's number 39, Jerry Jacobs. It is incomplete. Picked off by the Lions though. Coming back right side, Jerry Jacobs. Jackson, he is blown up. I don't usually love guys who affect my fantasy points on any given Sunday when I'm trying to win, but we love a great corner, and we love a guy from Georgia, and we love a guy from Arkansas State and Arkansas, and the Lions are rising up, so we welcome in and to the show your Detroit Lions uh, favorite guy there, Jerry Jacobs. Where Are you at the facility, bro? Yeah, yeah, I just got done working out, so, you know, had to come stop by in here. Wait, what's it like to be back? Oh, uh, it's great, man. Um, in here with the new, nah, not the new players. We know the free agency players here. Um, back with the coaches. Um, it's awesome to be back. Why don't you show us, a little, show us around a little, Jerry? Where, where, what are we looking so at? In, where are you? I'm, I'm in a DB room. So um, this is our background right here, as you can see. You see, like this. The, yeah, those on the same mission as you. So is it? Is there an energy in it? Because listen, I can tell you this. On Twitter. Ride the bus. On Instagram. Yeah, right, there we go. Ride the bus. What does that mean? <laughs> that means drive the bus. That means every day you come to work, make sure you like the person who's going to lead the bus for the team. That just, this the DB. What kind of workout? Yeah. What kind of workout so, should yeah. you in? Um, today we uh, ran. We did some um, little 10 yards. Uh, we did some sleds. We did um, bench and we um, squatted. Oof. So we did full body. That sounds awful. Yeah, no, nah, it was good. It was good work. Good work. You liked that? I would. I would. That sounds like punishment for when you do something wrong. Uh, listen, I can tell you this: on Twitter, on radio shows, on television shows, on streaming shows, all over the world is buzzing about the Lions. The NFL world sees things happening. We of course love Dan Campbell. The vibes are high around the league when it comes to the Lions. What does it feel like being back in the building with that, those guys? And what is the energy? Man, the energy is like, you know, um, coming from last season, um, I feel like the energy came over. Um, just being around, you know, the the, the, the coaches and the, the players from building this team over is amazing. Um, you know, I was here when we was um, one, only won three games my rookie season to come back and win nine yeah. and, you know, be the NFL favorite right now. Um, man, we just um, trying to stay on a straight path and keep working. So we don't really try to look into that, but we know that we changed some things around here. NFC North favorite going into that. Everybody's talking about it in, in a division that has a young guy like Justin Fields that still officially has a guy named Aaron Rodgers. It's really exciting. So take me to that from that three win rookie season that could not have been that fun. And it's a lot in your rookie. What would you say is the biggest reason for the change in success? Uh, man, we just believing in each other. Um, I would say my rookie season, um, when I came in, we had a lot of guys like, you know, free AC and the coaching staff were even new. So um, just, you know, trusting each other and um, building that bond to, you know, um, go out there and play as play for one one another. Uh, so I think once we got that um, hit, even Coach Campbell mentioned that um, this, when we came back yesterday, he was just saying that, you know, we got that bond feeling back. And um, once we, you know, get that, everything else just take place. But I think we just had to get that connection with the, um, the guys, with each other. How sad are you that Jamal Williams isn't going to be there? Just be honest. Man, I'm How very, sad? <laughs> I'm very sad because um, he's just an energy person. You know, um, even if you're down or something like that or you're sad, he'll come and he'll cheer you up and, you know, just bring good energy around. So this is going to be a good guy that I'm going to miss. Yeah, he's with the Saints now. But you at least still have the seatbelt gang, right? I heard about yes, this. What is the yes, meaning behind the nickname? <laughs> when did it get started? Uh, I started it my rookie season when I got here. Um, 
it just happened out the blue. Um, you know, a lot of DB, um, DBs just, you know, doing no fly zone and stuff. And then one day I just um, deflected a pass, I think, versus Minnesota, um, my rookie season. I just did this. And um, my coach was like, what is it? And I was like, I seen someone do seatbelt, but I don't think they really was trying to do seatbelt. So I'm going to call it seatbelt gang. And um, I just got a clothing line and um, I just – Took off with it every time I, you know, deflect the ball, I just throw it up. <laughs> so it's just a little yeah. seatbelt celebration. But, well, it's not just that. So I'm not going to let you say that, <laughs> uh, Jerry, because you sell merchandise and right. a portion of all the proceeds from seatbeltgang.com is used directly where it needs to be used in that community in Detroit, and you pour it back there, and I think that's amazing. So everybody head on over to seatbeltgang.com. Uh, I didn't know that you guys were doing that, and I think that's amazing. And, you know, you have your off season. You're a young player. The world's your oyster, all of that. But you spend time doing things in the community. I saw you held your first annual youth football camp. Tell me about that. Man, that's amazing. Um, every time I just think about the off season, that was one of the main things I wanted to do. Um, shout out to my marketing team, EAG. Um, they did an amazing job setting this up. Um, I got my jersey put up in my high school. Man, it's just a blessing, you know, to go back to somewhere, you know, you play that, you know, um, a lot of people didn't think you could make it out there and, you know, come back and give back to the youth. That's what I was trying to do. So um, it was just a blessing to be able to do that. South Cobb, Austell, Georgia, retired yes, your number. Yes, what did that feel like? Oh, man, I just, I still get the chills. I don't even think that, like, I just got to go out there and see it. Like, I, I it just, it's, a, it's amazing just because where I came from and what I did at that school and things like that, you know, the adversity that hit me at that school and it just made me the man I am today. So to go back up there to see no one can wear that number again is amazing. Gosh, that word adversity is one that you could use to describe almost every level of your journey, right? And this path to yeah, the NFL, it's adversity, it's perseverance. I've heard you use the word underdog. I've seen you write the word underdog when you're interviewed on social media. You sort of embrace that. What does it mean to you uh, when it comes to the, the underdog mentality? Uh, as you Obviously, you didn't have it easy. Um, and you made it on an NFL team as an undrafted free agent, which is a feat not many can do. Yes, man. Um, the underdog, that's just something I stand by. Um, even just leaving high school, like I said, um, that school, South Carolina, they helped me out. I didn't have a lot of D1 offers, so I went to junior college. And, um, that's when the underdog adversity and all the things like that hit, and I, I just ran with it. Um, just being the underdog mean like, you know, a lot of people don't know who you is, but it's time for you to show the world who you is, and that's what I stand on when I say underdog. A lot of people don't know who I am right okay. now, but when I, when I leave, they're going to know who I am, so... Yes, you're a real. You're a very good interview because you you give you give me a perfect like a soft pitch and for me to ask the next question because you are the underdog, but you gotta celebrate and let people know when you're there and that's what you did, my friend. My favorite footage of you and you've been with the Lions now for two seasons. You know what I'm talking about. You're at Lambeau, you're on the field. You are having <laughs> you are having the time of your life, Jerry. Yes. Yes. Um, I can tell you about that. <laughs> we we just won. Tell me. We just won. And, like, it was Sunday night, and I just knew that we ended someone's season. Like, our season didn't go how we planned, but we know we just ended someone, a, a legend, a Hall of Famer season. And, and we was in their stadium, so um, I was just lit the whole night. So I was just running around talking to all the Lions <laughs> fans. They some through beers, some through bees, and I, I was just catching it, having fun. Well, because you ended your season, it's so well-deserved, on a high note, which had to be satisfying. I love that foot. Like, you know, like Aaron Rodgers is seeing that footage and just, like, devastated with what's going <laughs> on, um, which, <laughs> which we love to see, right? Yes, ma'am. What's, like what's, what's he like to go up against? Like, what's he like, what just, the vibe on the field, even? I wish I actually sent you the video that me and him got. Um, so after the first game, I, those were my game. I came back. We ate this past season. I was first, my first start coming back was versus him. And, um, he just kept trying me, uh. like throwing the ball my way. And I remember halftime. I came up to him. It's a picture on Twitter. Came up to him like, "Stop trying me," <laughs> and he was just like, "Oh, you're a good player, this and that." And then to that Sunday night game, he actually when they lost, I thought he was just gonna go to the locker room. And players were talking to him. And I just told him, "Good game." He pulled me in. It was just like, "Man, you're a great player." Man, just keep working. You Juco proud of like, and just to hear that from you know Aaron Rodgers, someone that you used wow. to watch, you know, coming out of high school was amazing. Like, I got the video, and I still show people to this day. Like, they don't when they don't believe me, I'm in the NFL. I say, look, 
I show him me and Aaron Roger talking, and for him to say something like that in my ear, you know, whispered it in, it means a lot. So it's a great player, and you know, I like playing against him. But you want him out of there. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's gone. He, he just made it easy for us, so we finna run it. <laughs> I agree. I agree. We, we love to see. I think we might have that video. Let's take. Oh, oh my gosh! Yeah, go. <laughs> yeah, look, I was shocked. You did, I was shocked. I didn't know what to say. I was like, "Whoa, thank you, Aaron." <laughs> yeah, he said, man, "You're he a good player. Thing. Keep working." How did you have the? I don't even know the stones to go up to him and say, "Stop trying me." What? <laughs> oh no! Um, that was my first game back. Um, and I was coming off the ACL. Um, like you said, I was just thinking about adversity on the dog. And when I first got in, the first play was towards me. So I felt a little way. So when the halftime hit, I think we was leading 8-0. And they was a little mad. And I saw him walking. I just walked up to him like, Barry, stop trying me. And he was just like, no, you're doing good. Just keep going. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so, yeah, I just oh, had to I think that. he's so scary. You're amazing. Well, we're literally <laughs> looking forward to your third season, all right? You're moving ahead. You're obviously really committed. You're reading logos off walls. You have the right mentality. And we can't wait to see what you do in that division, looking, may potentially looking down at every other team atop the rankings after all is said and done in 2023. We appreciate you. I really appreciate what you do in the community, everything going on, seatbeltgang.com. What you do is incredible, and we are cheering you on on Up and Adams. We'll be back after this. Jerry Jacobs, everybody. Alabama edge rusher Will Anderson Jr. And one thing about him is he probably hates that I'm about to talk about him right now. Let me explain. When you Google Will Anderson Jr. and Humble, you get about 7 million results. That's because literally every quote that you see in every article, every teammate, every coach he's ever talked about uh, brings him up and brings up humility synonymous with his name before even getting into anything else. There's an awesome article from Aaron Suttle, shout out The Athletic, and then he talks about sitting to interview Anderson for the first time, and right before the interview begins, Will looks at him and says, do me one favor, don't make me out to be better than I am. Are you joking? Listen, I'm the queen of undersell, over deliver, don't overhype, but let's get real. And I showed this a few weeks ago, and I have to show it again right now. Let's take a look. He's one of the most decorated players defensively in the history of college football. Listen, you might want to hide it, Will, but you're already accomplishing things most rushers only dream about individually. I mean, on a team, Charles Woodson's trophy case might be jealous of what you got going on here. So if all of these accolades weren't enough, Will graduated with a degree in communications in how many years? Not four, not five, like it took me to do anything in college. Three years. So listen, I love the humility. It's a gift, it really is. It's hard to make Will Anderson Jr. out to be better than he is because he's literally achieved more than pretty much anyone who's ever played his position at his point in, this, in his career. So we love you, we see you, and here's the first.